Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for this number 36 of the 88 Films Italian Collection. This is Django Kill. On their website, 88 Films state, with a cast that includes such all-time icons of Italian action sleaze as the late great Thomas Milan of Almost Human and Ray Lovelock of Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man, you would already be forgiven for having high expectations for 1967's righteous Django Kill. The good news is that this hyper-violent spaghetti western delivers more bullets, blood, babes and bandits than almost any of its contemporaries. Indeed, so gruelling is the film's various moments of gory tortures and torment that the British censors originally removed a half an hour whilst the film faced legal battles in its native Indi Italy. Can't say that word today. Uh, now finally available on UK soil, uncut and uncensored Django Kill with its sordid tale of gang warfare, jealousy and a handsome stranger on a mysterious landscape marauding mission is once again ready to take aim at the hearts of fans that adore classic Italian carnage. Directed by cult favourite Gelo Questi of Death Laid an Egg, 88 Farms is proud to give Django Kill the love it deserves in this gloriously garish HD restoration. The special features on the disc are a high definition 1080p presentation of the film sourced from the original negative, an uncompressed English soundtrack, an uncompressed Italian soundtrack, newly created English subtitles, Django Kill, the evolution of Thomas Milan featurette, originally, original C-Save 
Vilos Para trailer and I think that's the original name of the movie uh, and the reversible sleeve of the alternative artwork the movie's region locked I'm afraid to UK re region B audio is 2.0 picture format is 1080p HD 235.1 the runtime is almost 2 hours just a little bit shorter than 2 hours and uh, yeah um, it's a 15 which is surprising considering the movie is what 50 years old um 52 years old, so you wouldn't imagine a title of like that would retain such status in its uh, classification, but it certainly has. So this was the first time watched for me. Uh, this is the first of the original Django movies that I've seen as well, so I was kind of excited about this one. To be honest, I have heard rumours about this movie, most notably when I was doing the Doing the Nasty podcast and checking into movies that had been heavily censored and you know, not only just censored, but by all means removed from consumption by the British population. Django Kill was one of these titles that kept coming up again and again as examples of egregious actions by the BBFC and their censorship. What's quite interesting about it is I imagine when this movie came out in 67, having now watched it, that they probably did have a hard time in that it is so unashamedly violent, like really, 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 really violent. And, like, it took me by surprise. My, like, I'm not the biggest Western film fan, if I'm honest. I like the genre to an extent, but I don't love it. And the ones that I love are at the top tier, you know, like, universally well-known as the best of the craft. Um, so kind of sitting down, checking this one out, I thought, kind of schlocky, spaghetti Western. I'll be interested to see what all the hype's about. And then, by the hour mark, I realised that I, I felt quite tired. And it wasn't because I was tired of the movie it was the movie was having this really draining effect on me is it like i see hyper violent is the way they've described it in there by today's standards i mean the violence is cliche and a bit you know like if you've seen westerns before it's that level um i think it's just the volume of it more than anything it's two hour runtime is in itself quite an exhausting experience but then when you um kind of couple that up with the violence on the the screen, I think it just, it never really has an off switch this movie, it's its kind of like always moving, even if that pace slows down at times, it has one direction right through at the end, which the best westerns do, if, I, if I'm honest. Um, the cast is great in this movie, I love Thomas Milan, I love Ray Lovelock, um, there are some additions of some kind of background characters that I've seen in other spaghetti westerns before, it was great to see them, um, but I think what kind of really shocked me more than anything is the command of the camera um, and direction by uh, Guillo Questi. Now I have, surprise surprise, a copy of Death Laid an Egg. Um, one of the, I think it's a European collection for one of the other labels in the UK put a Kickstarter up for it and I funded its restoration and it's lay there and it's shrink wrapped since it came in. It is my intention to originally get around to watch it um, but you know that time has moved on it will be instead of an originally getting around to watch it it will be an eventually he will get around to watch it but if this is any indication of how good this guy's direction is I can't fucking wait to watch this movie. Um, the direction is, is tempered, it's measured, it's slow, it's deliberate it knows exactly when to get up close and personal with the violence. It knows when to retract and let you soak in some of the, the scenery. The scenery and some of the long shots in this movie are fucking incredible. Um, and when you couple that up with the score, you know, it's just that... It's a I, I, had you told me right back at the start where I would be lavishing praise on certain movies, would Django Kill be one of them? I would have told you no. Because generally it's not a genre of cinema that I'm overly invested in. I was really looking forward to the horrors and the jally, that was what I was looking forward to. But now having seen this movie, I'm really excited for more Django titles, but on top of that, I'm really excited for the actual experience of sitting down and watching some more spaghetti westerns that I'm not familiar with. It was a thriving industry in Italy for a long time. Uh, and gave us some of the best, some of the ones that are still talked about today, some of the best with um, Clint Eastwood, just some of the best scores, uh, action across the board, just phenomenal shit. And this one, which I thought would genuinely be schlocky, coming in and has really won me over. In fact, I may go as far as to say, 
of the recent run of movies that we've covered on here, this is like a high watermark for me on the 88 Films Italian collection. Just really wasn't expecting to be bowled over by it. I mean, the story is not too dissimilar from pretty much every other spaghetti western, and it understands that. So what it does is it kind of ups the scale of things by, it says delivers more bullets in the description. There's a lot of gunfights in this. I don't know if it's the most bullets in them, but there's plenty of blood and like babes, as they've called it. But the, the women are incredible in this movie. And yeah, it just seems like the West is a dangerous place to be with the amount of bandits that were going around. I can't, for the life of me though, understand how you'd want to cut a half an hour of this movie. I think you can make trims to, to maybe, maybe at the most, maybe 15 minutes. So the fact that the BBFC went so hammer and tongs at like, removing half an hour kind of baffles me. Um, I would be interested to check that half an hour cut out to see how neutered the film actually is on the back end of it. But in this form, that is, I would imagine, probably the best that you're going to get in terms of length. you got to own it. And on top of that, the restoration work, I sometimes am a bit critical of 88 Films' work on this. Um, but they really brought it in this one. This is one of the older ones that we've covered as part of the collection, if not the oldest. And it looked vibrant. It looks still like an old movie, but they cleaned it up. They cleaned it up enough that I, I genuinely was surprised at how old the movie is. Kept having to read the back going, 67, really? You know, we at the, like I said before, 52 year mark of age for this movie just seems wholly weird and, and mind melting, but it is. And this movie holds up and it's cool. And I, I mean, just everything, the choreography, I imagine probably quite a lot of animals died in this one because I know what Italy was like in the 60s. Um... But yeah, I mean, this is this is in that golden era of spaghetti westerns, and what you have is actually surprisingly good dialogue, great cast, great villains in this, really, really great villains, but great heroes, and even the heroes are a bit gnarly, that are they heroes, question mark. Uh, and then everything else laid on top of it just made it a very enjoyable watch. I can't recommend this one enough, actually. Some of the other ones recently have been like, you know, if you own it, that's fine, you know, whatever. Um, but this, to me, is like... If you are trying to cover a wide scope of Italian movies and really kind of flesh out that side of things, this needs to be near the top. Honestly, it needs to be near the top of your, your selections. Even if you don't like westerns, I think there's enough to maybe give you food for thought and bring you over. Uh, it's just a nasty little piece of work in the best possible way. Uh, if you live, shoot is the subheading for this movie. Uh, I don't think I've I don't think I've heard of a better kind of tagline for a movie that we've covered recently. Just really, really enjoyed this one. Can't recommend it enough. Um, in terms of score, there is no way I can comfortably swing into this one without giving it a minimum of 4.5. I imagine when I watch it again somewhere down the road it'll get 5. But it's a 4.5 for this one. Can't recommend it enough. Well done EA Films for not only putting it out, but bringing it back to my attention. Um, and yeah, I'm glad I'm finally ticking this one off the list. Uh, Django Kill, the real fucking deal, disc number 36.